Welcome to the Vehicle Data Recorder software tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be going over how to extract the recorded data from a VDR, view that data, and export it so you can use it in other programs. First, we will need to download the VDR driver and software. Go to www.v-mux.com. Move your mouse cursor over the Vehicle Electronics button and a drop-down menu will appear. In the Weldon column, click Firmware and Diagnostic Software. We are now on the VMUX software page. All VMUX related software is posted here. Scroll down to the header Vehicle Data Recorder Software. There are two files we need to install. The first file is the Weldon VDR USB install.zip file. Click the link and save or open the file. If we try to run the installer in the zip file, we're going to get an error. We need to go to the folder we saved the file to and extract the zip file first. To do this, simply right click on the zip file and select Extract All. Once the files are extracted, Windows opens them in a new folder. Just to show you what we've done, let's look back at the other folder. You can see there is the original zip file that we had and now a new folder. The zip file is the one that has the folder icon with a zipper on it. Go to the folder that does not have the zipper icon and run Weldon VDR USB install. If the driver was previously installed on your computer, like it is on mine, you'll get a pop-up window confirming you're up to date. If this is the first time you've installed it, you'll be prompted when it's complete. That completes the driver installation process. Now we need to go back to the Akron Brass website and get the VDR OEM version 106 file. Select Open, and we will see that once the download is completed, there will be only a single file in the zip folder. Double-click to start the installation. The installation wizard will pop up. Follow the prompts until the installation is completed. This file installs VMUX, VDR Extractor, Viewer, and Configurator. Now that it's installed, you're now ready to extract the information from a VDR. To physically connect the computer to the VDR, we can either use the 0L40-2597-00 here. Uh, this attaches to the VDR tail with three pin connector Deutsch, and then on the other side, it's got the USB connection, which will plug directly into our computer. If you have a USB transceiver, the blue gray box, we can actually use that and pull the data down over the VMUX bus, just as if you were using Diagnostics or Downloader. Whichever way you connect, the extraction process is the same. There are some manufacturers that add extensions to the VDR tail, so you can use different USB connections. Make sure you check your truck before buying any hardware. Once you're connected to the VDR, locate the Weldon VDR folder in your start bar Click on the VDR Data Extraction tool. This will bring up the VDR Extractor program that we're going to use to copy the memory from the VDR onto our computer. Make sure the VDR has power, and once the program launches, give it a couple seconds to identify the VDRs there. If nothing happens in about 10 seconds, go ahead and unplug the USB connector from the computer, plug it back in, and make sure Windows makes that device detected sound that you would hear if you plugged a flash drive in. If it makes that sound, it's detecting the hardware, and you should see something in a couple seconds. Highlight the VDR connection and press Next. On the next screen, you're going to be prompted to enter in the VDR's password. The factory default password is VDR. However, the OEM or your administrator may have changed the vehicle's password when they received it. You may have to contact them if the VDR password does not work. On the next screen, we see the data range for the data that's in the VDR. If we have pulled data from this VDR previously, the data range is just going to be whatever is new data. Adjust your range as needed, or simply press Next to pull all the new data. Depending on the amount of data in that range selected, the download could take a couple seconds or several minutes. Once the download is complete, click Finish, and the data is now copied to your PC. Now that the data is copied to the computer, we can view it in the VDR viewer. Go to your Start menu and find the Weldon VDR folder again. Within there, click on VDR Viewer. The VDR Viewer will pull up the oldest serial number in memory by default. The Viewer starts on the Summary page. To look at another vehicle, press the Vehicle Serial Number and select it from the drop-down menu. Next to the Vehicle Selection is the available data range. The Start is the oldest date stamp in memory. It's in military time, so there's no AM or PM. The End Date is a last data stamp recording. The next section is where we set our viewable range, the span of what we're looking at. The span is currently set to one minute, which means we're only going to see one minute past the starting point. 
We can change that starting point and adjust the span to be several minutes, hours, days, weeks, or even months. The Power On will give us a quick list of all the times the VDR powered up during that time span. In this case, it looks like it only powered up once within that one minute, but if we change it to weeks or months, we would see several points. Below is a summary section. This data comes from the time span we selected. The stages section is total trips, parked, response, on scene, and non-emergency travel. This data comes from looking at when the park break is on or off and the status of the emergency master switch when that happens. In the elapsed time, we get hour, minute, second counts for the different types of information that we gathered in the stages section and an average for each. The speed section is all about how the vehicle is being driven. Here we will see the average speed of the vehicle, the maximum speed it reached, and the rough distance based on time and speed. Then we have a section where it breaks down the different times spent at different speeds and if the ABS was used at any point in time. Under all that is the truck performance section, which will let us know maximum RPM reached, average idle RPM, and the maximum throttle position. In the seatbelt tab, we'll see how many seat violations occurred, if any, during the time span we have selected. In this case, we can see eight seat violations occurred one time in each seat. A seat violation is any time a person is not properly seated and belted when the park brake is off. Any seat with at least one violation will show red. Anything like these grayed out ones means they're not being used. Let's go to the data tab and get a better idea of what happened. Here we can see all the second by second data. Notice how the park brake and service brake are both disengaged, but the engine speed is zero and the vehicle speed is zero. While it's possible that they left their seats belted, left the truck's park brake off, when they turn the truck off, it's more likely the vehicle's being maintenance and some things were disconnected from the VDR. Let's look at another truck that has some run data. When I change to another vehicle, I'll see I'll need to change my start time and my span time again. I'm just going to set the time to 7 1 2015 at 1300 hours and set the span to one hour to start. We can see that there's a large block of activity here, so let's narrow our span so we only have this first part in it. I think the starting point is good because it's just before the engine turns on, but I want the end span to be just as the engine goes into the high RPM. To find that, I'm going to scroll through data until I see the RPM jump from that lower number to a higher number. It looks like it's happening at 1332.22. This is where the engine speed really makes that change. So I'm just going to change my span to 33 minutes from the start point of 1300 hours. There we go. It's much easier to read this chunk of data now. Let's take a look at the summary and seatbelt tabs before we're getting deeper into this data. On the summary screen, we can see all the data points are now filled in so I have a better idea of how the truck is being driven and where time is being spent. On the seatbelt screen, we can see that seat A and K had one violation each. Seat C is black, which means that the seat and seat belt are programmed into the VDR, but they were never used. And the other seats that are green mean that they were never having a violation. Moving back to the data tab, we can scroll through each second to see the status of the vehicle. Here at 1326.38, we can see that the engine speed was 1907, the throttle was 100%, Vehicle speed was 24 miles per hour. ABS, emergency master, park brake, and service brake all disengaged. Seat A was seated and unbuckled, while all the other seats were seated and buckled. Let's change the start time to 1900 hours. Notice that no data is found. This means that the VDR did not have power during that time. If we go back an hour to 1800, we can see at the end of this, there's a record break. That means that the VDR turned off. We can keep moving forward an hour until we find when the truck was turned on next. It looks like it's the next day, 7 to 2015, 1840 hours, 4 seconds, and it was only on until 1844.35. Someone sat down in seat A for a moment, then got up, then sat back down, pressed the emergency master on for a few seconds, turned it off, and then turned the VDR off. If you need to share the VDR data with someone, the easiest thing to do is export it. First, let's go back to that run data that we were looking at before. Now, go to File, Export Data. Make a new file name if you want to, or just save this to your PC as is. A CSV file is a text file. You can open it in Excel or any other spreadsheet program. This concludes the VDR software tutorial. 
If you have any questions or need further assistance, please give us a call at 800-989-2718.